Sipping Show. Guess what time it is? It's Sip and Say time. It is. It is. Uh, we did a uh, podcast, two podcasts ago, about how I uh, was out without a job for three and a half months. And in that three and a half months, I got to see firsthand what a stay-at-home mom does every day. Because that's a question I think you've gotten before from people simply asking, what do you do all day? The infamous question. It, is, it does seem to be the first one once people will say, uh, or once you tell someone you're a stay-at-home mom, like, oh, what do you do all day? So I thought, hey. And it's typically people that don't have kids that ask. Yeah, exactly. If you exactly. have kids, then you know what I do all day. I think... <laughs> And we were, and I was the same way. I'm sure you kind of were too. If if you don't have kids, you don't realize the amount of time and effort it takes day to day, twenty four seven. So I got to witness it firsthand. So when people say something, I'm like, oh, I know, I saw it. And I don't think people mean to be rude when they ask. I mm-hmm. think some people just genu- genuinely want to know what what do you do all day with them. Yeah, I think they're just curious. Right. It was. It wasn't. I've never taken it as. Oh, well, it must be nice just to stay at home and, you know, sit on your butt all day. No, no, but it is the first question you usually get asked. Right. And especially because, you know, when when you had Blair, your original intention was to go back to work, and you did go back to work. But I knew when I went back that I wasn't going to stay. Because you were doing school counseling, and I think kind of go back to the beginning of, of why you decided to stay at home was I think part of it was your job you, you, you've you talked in the past you weren't a big fan of what you were doing no and he was kind of the perfect excuse to not right do it anymore yeah it was funny because you were I think really before you got pregnant and in most during the pregnancy you were pretty set on going back to work what why were you wanting why did you feel like you wanted to go back to work before he was born? I felt like <clears throat> we needed the money and I spent all that time and money going to school for what I wanted to do cuz I had to have my masters in order to do it. So I went to school for 6 years. And however much money and debt I was am and and I think I think it's just our society now it's like we put this pressure on women it's like you have to do it all you have to have the career you have to be the mom you have to be the spouse and not every woman has to, not every woman has to do that no and I think the two factors that was kind of holding you to stay at work you know, your expense that you had for your schooling and the money that you made. So basically it came down to money would have been the two main reasons you wanted to stay working. Money and I thought when I was pregnant and, you know, knowing a lot of people in education, I was like, oh, it'll be fine, you know. I don't have to be to work till 7.30. I'm home by 4 every day. You know, I get my two weeks at Christmas. I get my summer break, my spring break. It'll be fine. I, that's more than most people get. And I don't know, just... I think the first month I was still set on going back to work permanently. But I think the first month I was just trying to survive on fumes. I don't think we were looking that far ahead. No. Well, you always think, oh, I have all this time, and you really don't. I mean, here he is. He's already two. Yeah, time flies. And so I think, so he's born mid-December, January, you know, I was just trying to survive. And then mid-February hit, I was kind of like, I don't, (laughs) I don't know about this. Yeah. And I think I just enjoy, I mean, yes, the lack of sleep was terrible, but I think I just enjoyed I enjoyed being a mother a lot more than I thought I was going to, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I does. knew I would love it and it changes your life. I guess I just didn't like, I didn't think I would like staying home full time as much as I did. Yeah. And, and I think you got into a routine where, you know, you got up and you spent the morning with them and, and the afternoon and like that was just your guys' day every day. And then we got closer and closer to when you had to go back to work and then we had got planning on how we're going to, 
you know, get up and get him to daycare, pack all this stuff. And then when we started doing that, both you and I were like, we just, it, it doesn't make the morning enjoyable at all. It's kind of stressful every day, getting packed up, getting him ready, getting him over there. I mean, I, well, I talked about it on another podcast. I guess I'm just a firm believer in, I, I like to just kind of let babies and little kids sleep until they want to wake up. And I hated waking him up on those mornings. Because again, he wasn't the greatest sleeper. So it's kind of like, let sleeping babies lie. But <laughs> when yep. you have to get him up to go to daycare. So basically, I would wait as long as I could and let him sleep. And I would get him up and get him dressed and we'd be out the door. And I would take him and drop him off. I mean, that was the only time... I got to spend with him. I think if he was going to daycare now, I guess I could approach it two ways. I could get him up earlier and do some things with him in the morning. But I mean, we'd still have to be out of the house at like 640 in order for me to get him to daycare and get out to work in Hagerstown on time at 730. I mean, I'd have to get him up. If I was only getting him up to get him dressed... I mean, I would get, still get him up at 6.30 at the latest. Right. And you had been leaning towards that decision. I think we had talked about it. But what kind of really broke broke the camel's back of, hey, this is what I want to do? When I had to go and fill out the paperwork for state care. I think we talked about that previously that's too. that's what really hit home was this is going to happen. Because we went and toured it, toured the daycare when I was pregnant. But then again, you know, it's still like the baby's still in my belly. It's not real yet I guess and it was nothing against the daycare it's a perfectly fine place great place but when I went in February to finalize the paperwork I was just like I don't know if I can do it and you know he was only two months old you're still super super emotional I just like bawled with the girl that was in charge of the whole daycare she's like trust me I see this all the time like you're not the first mom that's done this and I was just so emotional and I just was sitting there thinking, I'm like, I don't know. Like, I just, I can't do this. I can't do this every day. And I know it gets easier for moms, but I was like, I just can't do this. And I remember leaving there and calling you bawling. And again, I was just like, I can't do this. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, I'll I'll do it to go back and finish my contract because we need that money and I'm not just going to leave them high and dry. But I'm like, I can't do this every day. This can't be a permanent thing. Yeah, and I was 100% on board. I mean, I wanted you to stay at home if you wanted to. But when you called me and, you know, I was like, absolutely, we'll make it work. And that's where, of course, we've done a podcast on saving money, which us doing a whole new budget and finding ways to save money was a direct result of you deciding to stay home. Well, that was the thing. It was, it was our decision to investigate. Okay. Can we make this work? Can we get our bills paid off of just your income? Right. And that was, it was kind of step one. And I, I really credit the both of us to sit down and, and really, really go through the budget with a fine tooth comb because we were looking everywhere to save. So we did a whole podcast on it and we really got looking and it's like, by the time we would have paid for daycare where she were driving 50 miles a day or so. I was spending, I mean, I would take, I would easily go through a tank of gas a week, if not more. Right, right. And driving him to where we were taking him was out of the way. Yeah, it was kind of the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah. So it was one of those, you know, when we really got crunched in numbers, we realized we could do it. So we decided to do it. I would be bringing my my take home. I A third of it would just go straight to daycare pretty much. That doesn't include gas. That doesn't include any other expenses that comes with yeah, daycare working is expensive. outside the home. And I understand, you know, a lot of people you know, do have to, you know, moms do have to work or, you know, moms want to work, but we were in the situation. We just, you know, right. you, you decided you didn't want to, and we decided how we were going to make it work. And we did. Well, I guess I want to preface that too, is I know there are moms out there 
that don't have any other option. Maybe they're a single mom. I mean, what do you do when you're a single mom? Right. I mean, you got to have an income somehow. No, we were fortunate to be in a situation we could do it. We've had to make sacrifices, but... There are a lot of people out there that don't have that option. Right. And there's a lot of women who, you know, they might love their career. And that's great. True. Yeah, there's some women out there that don't want to stay home. And that's that's their decision. Yeah. It, I'm not going to look it, down it's, on you. Yeah, it's, it's what works for you and your family and you and your kid. So, you know, you wrapped up the school year. And I've never seen you so excited for the last day of school. <laughs> so how was the transition from being a working mom and then going into being a stay-at-home mom every day? I think for the first couple months, well, we have to <laughs> add in. I was still getting paid so my last day was what mid early to mid June. I still got my regular paycheck until the beginning of August. So June and July were you know fabulous. I was still getting paid, but I was staying home. Oh, I experienced that last <laughs> last year with some severance pay. Yeah, it's it's nice not have to work and still get paid. Um, but as far as staying at home, it was the first couple of months. It was fine. I mean, I think I was kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, like what am I going to do all day every day? I think he was still at the age where, you know, he was six months when I started staying home full time. You know, he's really not mobile yet. He, you know, still taking quite a few naps. Not routine naps, but um, I guess I th- then I could kind of keep up with a lot more housework and stuff. I remember telling a friend. I was like, you know what? It is kind of nice being able to stay up with the laundry and and actually clean my house. And I think once he got mobile, I was like, oh, okay, I'm like this is a game changer. Like I literally have to watch you constantly, all the time. I was when like doors were getting shut and gate was put up, and I mean I could still put him in a couple contraptions that would keep him secure. But I mean he quickly outgrew those. So I think once mobility hit, I was like, okay, well, this, I can't just like put you in a little exercise thing and I do some dishes or do this and that. But I don't know. You go, everything is a phase. I've definitely learned that as a mom. Once you figure out one thing, you're on to the next. Um, I think once he hit, the stage where he transitioned to one nap a day in the afternoons. I thought I would hate it. I kind of liked that separation. Like, oh, I get time in the morning to do stuff and time in the afternoon. But once he transitioned into just an afternoon nap, I love it. We can run around all morning and do whatever we want. And then he crashes in the afternoon. But... I think a good quote to sum up trans- transitioning into it, into being at home, was, I made it up myself, I guess. My world got a lot smaller, but now I'm taking care of my world. He is my world, and I get to spend my my entire days taking care of him. Right. And to me, personally... There's nothing, there's no job and there's nothing more important to me than doing that. Now, obviously, you know, you love staying at home. There, I feel like there's a lot of benefits as far as, you know, the interaction between you and him. And, you know, it's, I, I just think it's a, it's a good situation. What sacrifices did you make personally when you stopped working and started staying at home with a baby and then a toddler every day? I think you have to find you have to find satisfaction in other ways. I like a lot of people have satisfaction in their jobs. They feel accomplished. And I and I know, you know, raising another human being is <laughs> satisfying and an accomplishment. Um, but I think just trying to find things that that I can do that aren't necessarily about him if that makes sense well i've heard you say it in other um moms that stay at home they 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 throw out the word lonely a lot it is lonely and that i think that's something that not a lot of moms talk about 
And I think it, it just goes to how you approach it. And I knew, you know, leaving a school system where, you know, I'm around people and kids all day, every day. I, I knew I would have to take the steps to not feel that way, even though you still do at times. I mean, if you think about it, you know, if Blair and I didn't go anywhere and it was just me and him here all day, every day. I mean, I think I like I think I would go nuts. <laughs> oh, I've been I I've had Blair, you know, over a whole weekend a couple different times and uh by mid Saturday morning we're going somewhere. <laughs> it's good for him and it's good for me. And I think when you have kids at home, I mean, they need a socialization just as much as you do. And I I've always been we talk about it all the time, you know, we're members of the local Y. And I was a very routine member even before I had him. And I knew they had the child watch. And I'm just like, you know what? You know, this is going to be your quote daycare. I mean, I can no longer am I going to wait till the afternoon to work out like I did when I was working. I'm just going to get up and get it done in the mornings. And he loves it there. We've, we've talked about it. I don't know how many times on here that he... He loves going there. It's his little daycare. He's he's in there. I think there's a two-hour time limit. He's in there about an hour and a half most days. And that includes me showering, too. So I love that I can... You know, and he... He doesn't go to a normal daycare, but if there's days where we don't go anywhere or don't have any plans, he's kind of like, um, why aren't we leaving? <laughs> He's used to that routine. He's used to getting up. Granted, we're not like rushing around in the mornings like we would be if I had to get him to daycare so I could get to work on time. But he's used to getting up and I make his breakfast. He eats. You know, we brush his teeth. I get ready. We, you know, get my bag ready, his bag ready. And we're we're out the door. And in and, and the meantime, he's playing with stuff or reading books. And I mean, it's not like we're running around trying to get out the door. But he's used to going somewhere most mornings. Now, last year, we talked about this on the previous podcast about resolutions. You had mentioned trying to do more things, put yourself out there more. Was that a direct effect of starting to get lonely being a stay-at-home mom a year and a half ago or so? Yeah. I mean, when you when you start to stay home, you have to force yourself to get out of your comfort zone and out of your shell, or you are going to be stuck in your house alone with your kid all day, every day. <laughs> and that's not good for you as the mom. It's not good for your kid. I mean, they need the socialization too. And so I think, yeah, I did kind of just put it on my heart last year to kind of branch out and do more things. And I think as moms, not just stay at home moms, I think as moms, we have to be very, oh, what's the word? It's not specific, but. Direct. Mm, sure. As far as. Intentional. That's what I want to say. We have to be very intentional with our me time. And so that if that means, you know, going out and trying something new that you've never done. Like that cookie decorating class I did last year. And then I did it again a few days ago. With another mom? With another mom, yeah. I don't have any interest in doing that on my own, but it was fun to go and learn and just do something different. I, you know, I joined a mom's group at a church. I never in a million years would have, like, done that. Yes, but and you just went without really knowing anyone. I didn't know anybody there. And, that, and I've known you a long time. That's not you. No. Typically. You, <laughs> you, you're you the type, <laughs> you'll research it. You'll see if anyone else is there that you know. You break it down. You, you overanalyze stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're like, hey, I'm going to go to this group. And I'm like, she is getting out of her bubble if she's going to go there by herself. And you, you love it. Yeah. And they have child care there too. And I think half the battle is... I know I'm doing it for myself and I know I'm doing it for Blair too. I'm getting him out of the house. I'm getting him around other kids. I'm getting him around other adults too. 
That's another thing I like about the child watch is sometimes he's the only kid in there, but you know what? You're around someone other than me, and that's great. Having time for yourself is important for everyone, especially parents, especially people in marriage. You know, you have to take care of yourself. If you take care of yourself, it makes you a better person for your spouse and your kids. Like, you like your Y time. You like your mops group. Um, obviously we both go to church, but that's a little different. But, you know, for me, there's times I want to go to the range or I want to go for a run and you, as a spouse, if, if your spouse needs that time, you know, be supportive of it when you're like, Hey, I want to go do this cookie class. Great. Go do it. I'll take care of later tonight. No worries. That way, you know, you're getting your time, you know, on the type I'm like, Hey, I want to go for a long run. I want to go during his nap. You're like, great. Go have fun. It's so important for couples or for individuals to take care of themselves. It's not being selfish if it's communicated very well. Hey, I'm going to go do this on Saturday. Do you need me here? Or is it, you know, just communicating it. And I try to do that during the week sometimes too, especially now during the winter when no one wants to be outside. outside. If it's spring or summer and he's napping, I might go lay out in the yard or do yard work or sit on the porch swing and read. I mean, just simple stuff like that. But in the wintertime, it's kind of like, oh, what do I do? I mean, there's always something to do around here. It's just whether or not I want to make the effort and do it. Or there's times where I'll, I'll do something for, let's say, an hour hour and a half and then we get to that like two hour mark and it's kind of like well I know he's probably going to be waking up soon maybe he'll stretch it another half an hour I don't know you don't want to dive into a right I I always say that to you I'm like well I don't really want to start anything new you know he's probably going to be waking up next 15 20 minutes you know what I do I pop my butt on the couch and I catch up on you know my big fat fabulous life or something like your your my 600 pound life Live PD, you know, whatever. Your your classic <laughs> television. No, but it, that's some me time. I can sit on the couch for twenty minutes under a blanket and just watch some TV. Yeah, just decompress. It, it, it's like I said, it's so important for everyone in the household. You know, I'm a morning person. I like to get my workout in before I go to work. That's I really like it because I get my time, my workout time. And Blair and I are both sleeping, so it, it's not like you're missing out. And it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't take <laughs> it away from you guys. Or, you know, Saturday mornings, I like to go to the range super early. And there's no one there, but I'm not missing out time with, missing on time, missing out on time with Blair, <laughs> if I could talk. So, yeah, that, that, that's so important. That's some really good advice to, to really more than just stay at home moms, any parents. Mm-hmm. Make sure you find a way to take time for yourself, even if it's just a little bit here and there. Heck, even just a shower. <laughs> nice, <laughs> do one long, hot shower. <laughs> I tell moms all the time, and that when I tell them this, like, man, that's genius. And I'm kind of like, well, why don't more moms take advantage of this? There are times, especially after a busy weekend or something, I'll go on a Monday, I'll go to the Y, and I'll drop him off. And I just go and shower. And I take my time, I wash my hair, I shave my legs... I get out, I dry my hair, I feel like a brand new person. And I go and I get him, and if that's the only thing I accomplished that morning, then great. <laughs> Just, yeah, it's important. I think another thing is, you know, obviously us you know, being married is, you know, when I get home, you're real good about, hey, you, you're not going to, like, I say, pawn Blair off on me, but... But I do. You do and you don't. I I want to. He's excited to see you, yes, so he wants. That's to see my you. time to play. You know, we get play with trucks or whatever, and it gives you a little time to go. You know, you usually prepare dinner, or you might pick up the kitchen, or you might do some photography, whatever you do. But I wouldn't want to be coming home and like just coming in the bedroom and doing getting stuff on the computer, or you know, my old job. I used to have to work some at night, mm-hmm. so I, I try to help out as much as I can as far as. You know, when I get home, I almost kind of give you a relief. Well, and I think that's the another benefit of staying home is I'm with him all day. And then you come home and I am kind of like, well, here you go. And I, like you said, I can go get dinner ready or do something, throw a lo- load of laundry in. And 
And I typically clean up dinner too, but your plan, you know, that's your time with Blair. I said, I've had him all day and had like, if I was working, we'd be like having a throw down on who gets this. <laughs> I, I feel like I, I feel like the three of us would be spending time together, but then it's like, oh, well, who's going to make dinner? Who's going to clean up dinner? I don't. And I tell people this too, and I don't want to sound like in this stage of my life and in this stage of motherhood, I have no problems being like the 1950s homemaker. I think that's such a bad stereotype. It is. And you, you do your fair share around here. I'm not going to say that you don't. But I mean, so I stay home with him all day. And I like I do housework when he naps, do laundry, I clean, I whatever else. But then I cook dinner, I clean up dinner. But you but you're with that's your time with Blair. So I have no problems doing that every night. Yeah, and it's not Yeah, I hate that. And it is a stereotype. It's like if you're a stay at home mom, you've I, ca- I cater to my husband. Yeah, you cater. You know, I you cater don't. to my husband's every whim. <laughs> but it's I, I think it's a bad mentality because what's what's wrong with being that person? If you get satisfaction out of it and you love it, you enjoy you know staying at home every day and. Well, I like taking care of my family. I mean, what's what's wrong with taking care of the two most important people? Right. In my life. And some women taking care of the family is they got to go work and provide, True. which is, yeah. it, you know, that's a great, that's what you got to do. You got to do it. Um, This is just our situation. But yeah, I, I think it's a terrible stereotype. And, and I don't want to be the dad that, you know, comes home and gets a newspaper or, you know, sits and watch TV the no, rest of the night. No, you come home and you play with your son. Right. Which makes it, you know, like you said, you get time to go, you know, take care of dinner, do some laundry, whatever you got to do. And that's just communication. That's just, be, you know, being a team. Right. And it's taken me a long time because I was not like this when Blair was first born. If there's a day where, say, he doesn't nap long or even just like today when he wouldn't take a nap. And I knew you were taking him to your grandma's. I was like, well, I know he gets to get a little bit of sleep. I'll just go in and like rock him and he'll sleep in my arms for an hour. And I'm like, well, I didn't get a whole lot done during his nap today. But you know what? I got to hold my son in my arms for an hour. Well, yeah, that was a conversation we had early in the staying at home. Yeah, you would get so frustrated because you couldn't, you were taking care of him so much. You couldn't get stuff done. I'm like, it's okay. Like, it's not a big deal. And if you get to the point where you're not able to get things done, and we've done this multiple times, you know, if you have someone that can babysit for a couple of hours, it's amazing if you get the kid out of the house. What you can get done in like two hours. If you hammer out two hours, you can get a lot of cleaning done. You can get a lot of laundry done. You know, a couple of projects. We cleaned our house. carpets <laughs> once last spring. But if you are, and I, I think about this a lot too. You know, being a, a, or if you're a working mom. Because I tell myself, I'm like, you know, if I was working, I wouldn't even want to do anything on the weekends. Because I'm like, I just want to be with my son. But then you can't, you can't just not live your life because you only want to be with your son on the weekends. And, you know. It'd be a challenge. Right. Like, you you still need to be social and have friends and, you know, go out on a date night. Or if you have obligations for something. And I'm just like. I, I feel like I have the time to do those things because I am home with him all week. You know, I'm going to a bachelorette party next weekend. I'm going to be gone all weekend. Do I feel a little guilty about it? Yeah, just because I don't, I mean, I don't really like being away all weekend. But I'm with him all week. And so to leave on a Friday and come back on Sunday, I mean, it's not a huge deal to right. me. Had I been working, I'd have been like, oh my gosh, like I'm not, I'm not going to see my kid <laughs> for a whole weekend. I would hate it. Yeah. I when you know, when we, when Blair came along and I saw how much time and effort it took, I gained so much more respect for single moms because I, I was a little naive to like, you know, how much time. And I think everybody is. And to do that by yourself, I couldn't imagine it. No. 
They, or if you have family members that just want to come over and clean for you. <laughs> And that's sometimes the greatest gift you can give to, uh, you know, especially like new parents. Uh, um, you know, it might not be money. It might not be food. It might just be, hey, come, come, come watch the kid a little bit while I clean, or, or if you want to throw in a little laundry, just simple things like that can be a huge. Well, we've huge talked help. about it before. New moms either want someone to come and clean and do all those things for them, so they can enjoy their own baby. Or they want someone to come over so they can get a break and clean and take a shower and start some laundry. So it goes either way. Yeah, the simplest gift you could give someone is just just showing up and either helping out or, you know, holding the baby for a couple hours. Just little things like that. It doesn't have to be big extravagant gifts. No. And I mean, even now when my parents come and visit for a weekend, I mean, my mom, she'll do the dishes after we eat or she'll help with laundry. And she, I don't (laughs) Jake, you know how my mom loves to do laundry. (laughs) Yeah. Three shirts at a time. (laughs) She, So we go visit her. She'll do our laundry and Blair's laundry. And yeah. And I've came home and my parents, you know, mom will do the dishes or, you know, dad might be mowing the lawn. It's just, it's just, Having that support around is, is a huge help. My dad will do some yard work. Very fortunate to have that. Well, and as my mom has said, she's like, it's nice to feel needed. And I think even at my age, it's I'm needed all day, every day. Sometimes it's exhausting, but other times it's like, well, you know what? I'm needed by somebody. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, our parents at their age, they know, you know, we're independent. You know, we're in our thirties we're parents, but they still want us to ask for help. And, you know, we have, especially the last few months that, you know, we went through, through some trying times, but no, it's a unique, I haven't say unique lifestyle, but I, I had a whole new respect for it after staying at home for three months, you know, watching what you did every day, not just with Blair, but, you know, keeping up with everything around the house. Now you did have a great husband to help you, but I'm like, man, she does this all day, every day mad props and like i said it's it's easy to get lost in that identity of and i think you did in what was that been 2018 i think that year because you know you're finishing up your school you're figuring out the stay home mom thing and you kind of like you said and we have great friends that we we hang out with but every day you just kind of got in a i don't know if it was a rut or just you know you got lonely well, I mean, I, I would take him to the Y a lot and I just, let me tell you, it's hard with that two nap phase because it's like he gets up, I was able to like rush to the Y, do a class. I'd have to rush home so I could put him down for his first nap. He would get up, he'd be awake for, I don't know, like three hours. We could do a little more errand running or go out to lunch or something, do grocery shopping get him back home, get him down for another nap. So I think once, like I said, once we transition to the one nap a day, it's been a little easier to kind of be social. Yeah. And then you, you know, you did a great job putting yourself out there and look what you've gained from it. Like you said, your, your mom's group and you go to the Y all the time, you know, we started going to church. So it's really opened up a lot of things for you socially as well. I think, yeah, you just, you need that. I I can't be stuck all day every day with Blair, who doesn't talk much. <laughs> There's a ton of sacrifice in being a stay at home mom or a parent in general, and you do have to take time and be. A, I don't even want to call it selfish. You have to take care of yourself because when you take care of yourself, you're a better person for those around you. Yeah, yeah and sometimes, I mean, Blair needs a break from me. Well, everyone I mean, needs a he, break from everyone. Oh, they're gonna say everyone needs a break from you. Hey, after three and a half months, you were ready for me to go back to work. There were some tense times because, like I said, that was the most time we've ever spent together. Because <laughs> we do, we do everything and get, and get the same results. We just do a lot of things differently. So, what exactly did you learn after staying home? I think it's just the constant, especially Blair. Blair is just one hundred percent a boy into everything, hundred mile an hour. If you're not paying attention, he's going to break something. <laughs> Whether that's a bone or a fra- something fragile. And it's just that, I think just the consistency of 
always having to you know watch him make sure he doesn't you know and our house is pretty baby proof but i need just the consistency every day you when he's awake you have to be on i have to be on from the time he gets up to when he goes and takes a nap from the time he gets up from a nap to when he goes to bed i mean i because like you said he's gonna get into everything constantly making sure like especially with him and Louie you know they do pretty well together I'm constantly watching them or like you know like watch out Louie he's gonna run you over with his trucks here in a second and and I know some people are like oh well they're a baby just keep an eye on them they're so fast and things happen even if it's just like climbing on something like the bed or the couch you know it can happen Which so he, fast he does pretty well climbing on the bed like yeah, he, he knows how to say get, that and then well he knows how to get down yeah, that he was doesn't huge. know how to go, or he's not going to fall off head first. Right, right. So yeah, I think I think for me it was just that consistency of always having to be, like you said, on. And like that first five minutes after you put him down for a nap, you're just like, mm-hmm. okay, <laughs> sit here a couple minutes, Re- regroup here. <laughs> it was great, you know the the unemployment was was a really good learning lesson in a lot of the ways, but. To be able to stay at home and, and see what you do every day it gave me a whole new appreciation for, you know, what you do and, and, you know, moms in general. So, like I said, you always got to ask that question, you know, what do you do all day being a stay-at-home mom? There's a lot. There's a lot. Well, I prepare three meals a day. Um, you know, I pretty, everything you do for yourself, I have to do that for myself and for another person, whether yeah. that's. Preparing meals or getting dressed, brushing teeth, uh, changing diapers, <laughs> entertaining him, trying not to entertain him too much. And we've touched on this in another podcast, too. Some working moms kind of take their cues from daycare as far as, like, developmental stuff or, hey, he should be doing this or he should be eating with a fork right now or he should be. I'm like, I ain't got a clue. I mean, I'm just... I'm just over here winging it on my own, and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you're winging it, but you're doing good. It's working out. So it's all on me. The responsibility is on me during the day to raise this other human being. Not only like provide for his physical needs, but emotional, social, mental. It's, it's, it's draining, and it's exhausting. That's why you're ready to go cook dinner and clean the kitchen when I get home. Pretty much. <laughs> That's your relaxation period. I really want to go do some dishes. <laughs> well, I appreciate all you do. Like I said, I uh, I got to see it firsthand, and I have a whole new appreciation. And uh, do you want to be a stay-at-home dad? I, you know, if I had to, I think I could. But you're doing a really good job, and I like my new job at or my new career. So I think we'll just stick with our current roles and and go from there. So. Jill, great job. Thanks. Cheers. Make it a great day and sip it safe.